techniques? Well, if you take uh, classic yoga like Patanjali to us, his system is you start with asana, which is holding one posture as long as you can and doing it every day for longer and longer periods. Eventually, you get over the fidgets, the boredom, and all the general nuisance of it, and you find yourself in a very peaceful place. This seems to be the unimprinted first circuit before you've imprinted either the infophobia or infophilia. The next step is pranayama, which quiets all the emotional compulsions on the emotional territorial circuit. And the third step is dharana, which is concentrating on one image and dragging all words out of your head. That seems to be the hardest step for most people, so very few people follow that. Instead of dharana, there's mantra. Instead of trying to concentrate on a red triangle, which tends to turn orange after a while or a little off screen entirely, you take a phrase and just keep repeating it. I learned one from some wandering uh, shaman I met once. Shamadi Shawadi, Shamadi Shawadi, Shamadi Shamadi, Shamadi Shawadi, Shamadi Shawadi, Shamadi Shawadi, Shamadi Shamadi, Shamadi Shawadi. It's almost like a windshield wiper. It really cleans the mind. It closes down the third circuit. So you close down the first circuit with asana, the second circuit with pranayama, and the third circuit with dharana or mantra. And then you close down the fourth circuit by taking a vow of celibacy. And then you got a body full of energy and nowhere to go, so you explode upward into one of the higher circuits. At least that's my analysis of how yoga operates. Those who don't want to take a vow of celibacy can study the art of Tantra, which takes the sexual energy and instead of blocking it entirely, formalizes and ritualizes it into a higher circuit experience. Now that we've looked at the four basic circuits, what, what are the higher four circuits? Well, the fifth circuit Leary calls the neurosomatic circuit, and I've never found a better label for it. The neurosomatic circuit is turned on by bleaching out the first four circuits in the traditional yoga way, or by uh, just ordinary meditation without yoga exercises and all the accessories. Just spend 45 minutes a day trying to clear your head of all thoughts by repeating a mantra or by concentrating on some object in your field of vision and blocking everything else out. Kozhipsky recommended staring at an apple. Kozhipsky, the inventor of general semantics. Anyway, um, the most fashionable method recently is the brain tuning machine. You tune the machine down from beta to alpha and you get very tranquil and calm for a while. You turn it down below alpha to theta and you get into a pretty deep meditative state. Anyway, the fifth circuit, the usual way of turning it on, which I almost forgot to mention throughout most of history, has been cannabis. Cannabis is the specific chemical for the receptor sites in the brain where the neurosomatic circuit is activated. Whether you smoke it or eat it in muffins or brownies, it tends to create an explosive enrichment of the sensory sensual manifold. 
and immediately you'll find a hell of a lot is going on in your body and in your perceptual field that you never noticed before and a lot of it is hilarious and a lot of it is sexy and a lot of it is thrilling and a lot of it just bowls you over with mystical awe. How does turning on this fifth neurosomatic circuit affect the other four circuits? Well, first circuit anxieties begin to look silly and paranoid. Second circuit emotional compulsions begin to look a bit robotic and you're embarrassed by them and you want to get rid of them. And third circuit reality tunnels begin to seem very subjective and relative and none of them look objective and totally real anymore. And your fourth circuit sexual pattern begins to seem a bit robotic and silly too. So you gain quite a bit of perspective on yourself. Yeah, you're gaining more freedom. Bob, does standard psychology recognize this neurosomatic circuit? Well, it's one aspect of what Freud called the oceanic experience. Freud recognized it as a human phenomenon, and he thought it was a blissful regression to infancy, which uh, he thought was harmless, but he didn't want to stay there. He had to come back to adult reality eventually. But he did recognize it as a human experience. He only puts all the higher circuits under the general title intuition, bunches them all together. There's a guy named Kenneth Ring who did a lot of LSD research when it was legal and then switched to uh, near-death experiences when he couldn't use acid anymore. He started collecting experiences from people who had out-of-body experiences or seeming out-of-body experiences or whatever you want to call them. He found a lot of similarities to LSD trips. And he has his own label for a neurosomatic circuit, but I forget what it is. But they, there are several different names for it, and then in Hinduism it's called dhyana, the trance of unity, because it tends to make perception more global and less egotistic. So is it one of the effects of an opening in this uh, neurosomatic circuit to increase uh, compassion? I think absolutely. Very strange. I don't think Leary ever talks about that aspect of it. But my experience and the conversations I've had with other researchers, other outlaws, other alchemists, etc., I think the beginning of neurosomatic experience is almost always correlated with more sensitivity to other people's suffering. And I think the correlation or connection between pot and anti war protest in the 60s was no accident. Potheads were much more horrified by the Vietnam War than alcoholics were. So kids are being burned up with napalm. Gee, that's terrible. Let's have another drink. You can't say that on pot. Kids are being burned up by napalm. For Christ's sake, we've got to find some way to stop that. You feel more. I mean, you're more open. Your senses are open on all levels. The whole organism is much more open. So I think it, it definitely increases compassion. And empathy. So, what day of the week correlates with the fifth circuit? Friday, which is named after Freya, the Norwegian sex goddess, the Marilyn Monroe of the Norwegian pantheon. And of course, in the Latin tongue, the day is named after Venus, who's the South European equivalent of Freya, the goddess of sexual ecstasy. Bob, you made the point that the first four circuits basically are imprinted once and then um, stay that way for the lifetime unless they're re-imprinted under special conditions. Is that also the case with the fifth neurosomatic circuit? I don't think so. I, I think the higher you go on the circuits, the more re-imprinting you can do. I think you can re-imprint the neurosomatic circuit in a variety of ways, depending on what you want to do. If you want to do it, I mean, if you want to concentrate on painting, if you've never been very sensitive to painting, uh, without doing a lot of complicated yoga, just smoke a joint and go into the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, and you suddenly discover what art's all about. <laughs> Yeah,